If you've ever ran into problems with Jest when it comes to import export statements or configuration, you know how much of a pain it can be to work with Jest inside of a modern JavaScript environment. And this is where vTest comes in. vTest has all the amazing features of Jest built into it, but it's created for a modern approach to JavaScript. It has TypeScript support out of the box, import export support, and you really don't have to do any configuration at all. Best of all, if you're already using the Vite bundler, which is an amazing bundler, then it's going to integrate perfectly because it was built by the exact same people. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name's Kyle, and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And in this video, we're gonna be talking all about Vtest. And to get started, we're just gonna do this with a Vite project, but you can use Vtest in any project you want. So to create a basic Vite project, all we need to do is type in npm create Vite and then just put a period, and that'll create a Vite project in your current directory. And it's going to walk us through a couple steps of what we want to do. For example, our package name, we're going to call Vite test example, because we're going to be working with that. We're going to do it in vanilla JavaScript, and we're going to use TypeScript for this, just so I can kind of show you how it works. Now, the first thing we need to do is install all those dependencies. So I'm going to let that run. And as you can see on the side over here, we have a bunch of different files generated. The main one we have here is like a source file. And we also have like a TypeScript config right here. Those are the kind of the main files you're going to worry about. Now, if we just type in npm run dev, that's going to run our actual project and it's going to open up on localhost 3000. But we don't really care about that because we're going to be focusing all about testing. So to install the vtest library, we can just npm i this as a dev dependency. So we're gonna say that we wanna save that as a dev right there, and we can just type in vtest. Now we hit enter, and that's going to install this vtest library. And if we go to our package JSON, you can see it's right here in our dev dependencies. You will notice it's a very early version. It's not even version one yet. So there may be some changes that happen, but the overall core of how this works is going to be pretty much the same. And the nice thing is it's built on top of like the Jest API. So if you know how to use Jest, it's going to work pretty much exactly the same. And if you're unfamiliar with Jest, I have a whole video covering it. I'll link in the cards and description for you. Now to get started with vtest, you can do just like you will with Jest and you can create a file that's going to be all of our code. So we could, for example, create a sum.ts file where we're gonna have some function, which we're gonna export default function called sum. And this function is going to do something. And then we're gonna create a test file for that, sum.test.ts. So now we have a test file and we have the file that we're testing. And the reason I'm breaking this up like this is because I don't really wanna test this main TS file. This is just like auto-generated code. This is just an example file that we're gonna test. This is gonna take in some numbers. It's gonna take in an array of numbers essentially. And it's just gonna be a number array. And then what we wanna do is we wanna return the result of reducing this down. So I can say numbers.reduce. I wanna take our total and I wanna take our current number and I just wanna do our total plus our number and our default value is going to be zero. So this is a super simple function that just sums up all the numbers you pass to it. So if you call it like this, it's going to sum one, two, three and give you six, super straightforward. So let's write some tests for this. Now to get started, we can just import sum from dot slash sum. And already you'll notice that we can use import export statements inside of our code, which is something you could not do with Jest. So already that's amazing. Now we can come down here and we would, you know, in normal Jest, we would say something like describe and then we would write out our code, for example, like this. But with vtest, you actually need to import describe, test, expect, and so on. So I'm gonna do an import that has describe. It's going to have expect and it's going to have it. And it's going to be coming from vtest. Whoops, there we go. Now we have those different functions available and you can make it so that these are global if you want via some config settings, but I prefer to just import them manually because it's explicit what's going on. So we're just gonna describe a bunch of tests for our sum and our first test is gonna be here, returns zero with no numbers. Whoops, there we go. And inside of here, we can just say, if we call sum and we don't pass it anything, we expect the value to be zero. So already now we have a test. Now in order to actually run this test, we're gonna to need to create a script for that. So we're just gonna create a script called test. And this test script is just gonna run vtest. Now vtest, when you run it by default, is going to set itself into watch mode. So if we just come in here, say npm test, it's going to start up our test. I'm just gonna make this a little larger so we can see it. And you can see it says one test has passed and it's waiting for file changes. So if we come into here and we change it, for example, we change our default value to one, our test is now going to fail and you can see we get a failure and it's giving us the reason why. Again, very similar to how Jest works, a lot of the same outputs, but since it's using Vite behind the scenes, it's gonna be really fast. And since it's got all of these default things for export import, it means you don't have to worry about compiling to a node version to use your testing library, which is a huge plus in my opinion. Let's change this back to zero so it's working and just write out a couple more tests so we can really see how this works. 
we can come in here and we can say it returns same number for or with one number. There we go. Make sure I spell that correctly. And this is just saying if we pass a single number to sum, it's just going to return that number. So we can just say, hey, you know, if we pass two in here, we expect the result to be two. When I save, you can see we get two tests passing. And this is incredibly quick. I mean, it took two milliseconds to run our test, which is nice because as you're writing your code, if you come in here and you accidentally change something, make this a minus sign, now you can see immediately that you have tests that are failing. So that's super handy. Now let's write one more test for just an arbitrary number of values. So we're just gonna say returns sum with multiple numbers. So we're just gonna come in here, we'll say like one, two, three, and that's going to add up to six. There we go. And if I save, you can see we now have three passing tests. Now, if you wanna take this a step further, you can actually do a coverage report. So if we go back in here, we can change our package JSON test to have dash dash coverage appended to it. And now it's going to give us a coverage report when we run this, and it's going to be in watch mode. So you can see it's saying that we're missing a dependency. So I'm just going to install that real quick. This is just a dependency that helps render out all of the different coverage data. So as soon as that installs, we just need to rerun this. And now as soon as it runs, you're gonna see it's going to give us a coverage report telling us all the different statements, branches, functions, and lines. And currently, since our function is so small, we have 100% test coverage, which is great. If I were to write some additional code down here, for example, return zero, and now I save, you can see that we only have 75% test coverage and line four is uncovered in this file because none of our code actually makes it to this point because it returns right here. This is really useful. Now, if you wanna configure how all this testing related stuff works, you're gonna need a vite config for that. So we can just create a new file called vite.config.ts and depending on what you have for your Vite project, you may already have a config or you may not. This is just going to be a general config for your entire Vite project. Now, in order to get our config working, we need to import the define config function. And this is actually gonna be coming from vtest instead of Vite. So it's vtest slash config. And this is because vtest adds additional config operations on top of just your normal Vite project. And then we can just export the default of running this define config function and you pass it an object. And in our case, we wanna pass it a test property. This is gonna define all of our test related configuration options. And the main one I wanna configure here is our coverage option. And we can change how our reporter works. We can pass it an array. For example, if we wanna have a text converter for our coverage, that's going to be right here. That's what this text is right here. But we can also add in, for example, a JSON version, or if we wanted, we can have an HTML version. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna close out of this, rerun it, and if we just give it a second to run, you're gonna see up here we have this coverage folder and inside of here we have a bunch of HTML. I can open up this HTML real quick and I'll bring it over so you can see it. But you can see here essentially that we have all of the data for our test. We can click on this file and you can see all the lines that are run for all of our different tests. So it's a really easy way to see exactly how our code is working, what's all covered and so on. And it's nice that it does this in HTML text. And there's a ton of different formatters as you can see. There are tons of options that you can choose from for exactly what type of reporter you want for your coverage. Now, like I mentioned, this includes essentially all the stuff built into Jess as well as things that are built into Mocha, but it also adds a few additional features such as the ability to test things in line. So instead of creating a test file like this for our sum function, since our sum function is so small and so concise, we can actually add the test directly into our sum file. So I'm gonna take all of this code, I'm just gonna move it into our sum.ts, just like this. And what we need to do is first get rid of this import because we don't need it anymore. And now we need to tell our code, hey, this is going to be our test code right here. So an easy way for us to do that is to create a single if check. And this if check is gonna say import.meta.vtest. And if this is true, then that means we are currently trying to test our code. So we wanna run all of this test code and we should make sure our indentation is proper. And also our import should be inside of here as well. So we can say const all of these values is equal to importing that meta.vtest. So this meta.vtest is just all of the additional vtest library essentially. So this allows us to only do this import when we're actually in testing mode and not when we actually run our production or development version of our site. So this right here is all we need to do, but you'll notice we get an error. For example, this vtest is showing an error right now. That's because we're using TypeScript. So we'll fix that in just a second here. Let me just get rid of this test file because we no longer need it. And then we're gonna talk about how to fix this error. Essentially, we just need to tell TypeScript that we have this vtest property on our import meta. We can do that inside of tsconfig by just adding a types property. And this types property takes in an array. And in this array, we can just add our vtest slash import meta. And now all that's going to do is just going to fix these errors for this because it knows what this is. 
So now that is fixed. Now we can actually run our test and hopefully our tests are going to work just like they did before. And of course we're getting an error. The reason for that is because vtest by default only searches for files that have like .test or .spec in them. We need to modify that so it'll also search inside of our normal files as well. We can do that inside of our vtest config. To do this, we can just add a single line, which is just going to include sources. And this includes source is going to be for our source folder, any file that ends in JS or TS. So it doesn't matter if it's a test file or not, it's going to include these and check to see if they have tests inside of them. Now when we run this, we should hopefully see that all of our tests run. If we just give it a second, you can see all of our tests are passing and everything is running as expected. So that's really nice that it's able to do that for us. So if you have a really simple function like this, you can just include the test in line inside that function, which depending on your project needs, could be really nice for cleaning up your code. Now there is one small issue with this that we still need to fix though, and that when we bundle our code for production, it's going to include all this testing code. Let me show you what I'm talking about. In this main TS, I'm just going to change this to use our sum function. We'll just convert it to a string. And I'm going to make sure up here, I import that sum function from dot slash sum. So all I'm doing is just using this sum function in our code so that when we compile it, you can see the output of it. So if we just run npm run build, it's going to build a production version of our site, it's going to minify everything down. And we have this dist folder that has it. And inside of here, we have our JavaScript. And now it's hard to read this JavaScript, but you will notice that we have a section right here in the middle. And you can see that this is our testing code. You can see it has like return same number with number, return sum with multiple numbers. All of our testing code is included in our production build, which is obviously very, very bad because we don't want to include all this additional code since our users need to download it. So instead, an easy way for us to fix that is a single line inside of our Vite config. This single line right here, I'm going to paste it in, just uses the define property. And we're saying we're going to define this import.meta.vtest, which if you remember correctly, is what we used for our if check. We're going to define that as undefined. And by doing that, essentially all that's going to happen is in our code, when we get to this if check, undefined is false. So our if check is going to be essentially always false. So our bundler is actually smart enough to see that this if check always evaluates to false. So we can remove all of the code from it when we bundle our code. So I'm gonna show you exactly what that looks like. We're just gonna save this. I'm gonna rerun our build real quick, give it a second to run, and I'm gonna open up the JavaScript file, and you're gonna see all of that testing code is removed. It used to be right here, but now all of it is removed. So with just those few little config options, you can actually write inline tests, which is not something you can do in Jest. Now for me, the biggest benefit of this is not necessarily being able to use inline test with vtest, but the ability to use import and export statements and have one single configuration file that handles both my application and my testing, that's the real reason I think vtest is so much better than Jest. And the fact that you can actually just use all of the Jest APIs inside of vtest makes converting from one to the other incredibly easy. Now, if you truly want to master vtest, you're going to need to learn Jest. And I luckily have a full tutorial covering everything you need to know about Jest. It's going to be linked over here. So I highly recommend you check that out. With that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.